Thanks, Miguel. Mm, hello, everyone. Mm, this is Yu Jie from Intel Zero Day CI team. And today, uh, we'd like to share our work of enabling Rust in our kernel testing service and hope that we can help the development of Rust for Linux project and increase the influence of Rust in Linux community. And as well as sharing our experience to other kernel CIs who are also interested in this topic. And uh, yeah, here are the contents. First, I will do a brief introduction of Zero Day CI, and then I introduce our Rust toolchain setup and the Linux repo coverage. Uh, the major work we've done is mostly about build testing. And for future work to be done, um, there are many topics to be discussed, especially about introducing various runtime tests. And uh, Zero Day CI is an automated test service for Linux kernel, also known as LKP or kernel test robot. We provide comprehensive test coverage, including build, boot, functional, performance, and static analysis, and fuzzing. And we also have various compiler support, including GCC, Clang, and of course, uh, Rust compiler now. And uh, uh, bisection-oriented bisection is an important feature of Zero Day CI, which means that we, we not only catch an issue, but also we will do bisection to find the first commit that introduced the issue, then we can send report to notify the patch author or the repo owner. So let's go to our Rust toolchain setup. We use a combination of Rust compiler and bind generator to define our toolchain version uh, because uh, Rust C and bind gen are defined in the main tool versions. Uh, so, uh, Rust has already provided an easy to use script to install the tool chain by, by simply one command. But uh, for our testing service, we need to consider more. Uh, so, uh, the Rust C version will be updated regularly to follow the latest stable release. So, we also have a, a service to upgrade our uh, Rust, in, Rust version in our, in, in our environment. And since we, we need to do bisection from the bisection view, the required Rust version may, may also change when jumping from one commit to another in the bisection process. So we already have a adaptive version switching logic to, to support this case to switch the Rust version dynamically. And about... Uh, Linux repo coverage. Uh, for now, we are running tests on Rust and Rust Next branch of Rust for Linux tree on GitHub. And since Rust Next branch will be finally merged to Linux Next, so we are also testing Linux Next with Rust enabled. And this does help to spot some binding issues. So once uh, Rust is finally accepted to mainline, we will also cover it as soon as possible. And first about build testing, we have two types of coverage. First, we have uh, a setup Rust tool chain now in our path environment variable. So this can provide a partial coverage. Uh, when Rust configs can be enabled by random config build, and second, since most Rust files are samples now, so we have a specific config to enable all the Rust samples and build them. Uh, once there are new samples being added, uh, we can also enable them at once by scanning kconfig or make file. And then we can capture errors or warnings produced by Rust compiler or by bind generator, and also including C code in Rust helpers. And here are some examples of issues we have reported, uh, such as the warnings in rusthelpers.c 
and this is kind of um, Bingen errors uh, when the uh, Linux uh, the Rust Next is merged to Linux Next, and the Maple Tree adds some code that Bingen cannot handle, and this is the case that uh, Rust may have conflict with other codes when merged to Linux Next. And uh, uh, Zero Day CI um, will provide two types of report. The uh, first is called build summary report. Once uh, it will be triggered uh, when any branches in our repo list are updated. And once the testing is done, uh, uh, it will, uh, sorry, <laughs> I mean, it, it will build the, the updated branch set under various architectures and the configs, uh, such as uh, listed here. Let's say at, at the right side, uh, uh, maybe many different random configs. And uh, we will also build a specific config which has a Rust suffix. It just means the, the previous mentioned uh, configs that will enable all Rust samples. Uh, usually this report will be sent send out to the repo owner within one day. And another type of report is called build by section report. Uh, this report is triggered once any build errors or warnings are captured by the CI. Then we will do by section to find the first commit that introduced the issue and then send the report to the patch author. Uh, the response time depends on the flow of bisection process. And some low confidence reports may, may also go through manual check procedure to avoid generating false alarms. And that's all for the works we've done until now. And it is only an initial phase of enabling Rust in our testing service. And we mostly focus on build. Uh, so I need to say sorry that the runtime testing is not enabled yet due to our limited resource, but it is already in our plan and we will, be, uh, we will enable them gradually in the future. So next we'd like to dis discuss about future works to be done. And first thing is about some configs that controls Rust compiler options, such as uh, different op optimization levels, uh, overflow checks, and build alert. Uh, though these are build configs, but they may also have connection with some runtime behaviors, such as uh, they may impacting boot process. Uh, for now, we, we don't set uh, these configs explicitly, so they will remain at the default settings. If requested by developers, we can also support uh, customized settings for these configs. If I may, the, on the uh, optimization yeah, yeah. level, this, this will go away. This has gone away. The optimization level, we will keep it only uh, what is now similar as chosen for C. So the other options are gone, basically, at the moment. There was a discussion about whether to keep them or not, and the decision was to optimize the same, uh, both sides, the C and the Rust side. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, I got it. You, you, just, just uh, you mean, just leave this uh, similar as chosen for C, this config? No, uh, I mean that uh, the, the other ones, the 0, 1, 2, 3, S, and Z, they are gone, so they are, they are removed. We don't have them anymore. So in the future, it will be gone. The, the ops level, they, they, they are gone. So less, less options in that. Oh, way, basically. Just a comment. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yes, I uh, got it. Thanks. Uh, the next uh, work we will be done is that we, we uh, have an LKP tool to help users to reproduce the issue. So. Uh, it will download the tool chain from our website. And we already support 
uh, downloading GCC and uh, Clang, and then we will consider to support downloading Rust to uh, uh, in this tool, so that user can utilize this tool to set up Rust environment and reproduce the issue conveniently without caring about the tool chain setup. And uh, let's look at this initial patch that introduced Rust samples. So we can know that uh, these samples can directly be used as test cases in CI. So we are also considering enable these samples tests in zero day as a runtime test. And uh, Miguel mentioned that there is uh, also an internal CI in Rust for Linux projects. So, so uh, mm. we'd like to know if it is possible to, to share more info about Rust for Linux CI so that um, the two CIs can have better cooperation and their day CI could be, be a good uh, complement to the Rust for Linux CI and which could also encourage other kernel CIs to join this game. Um, actually, we, we only catch very few issues on Rust for Linux tree. So I think it means that the, the internal Rust for Linux CI works very well and most issues uh, are resolved inside the project, only seldom go to the public. So I think there's a lot that we could learn from Rust for Linux CI. Uh, Miguel, could you help to give some comment on this? Yeah, uh, thank you for, for the kind words. Uh, the CI, yes, in the commit message that you are showing there, in the C, the CI, our CI is basically uh, we run we run it before we merge the code. So we run it basically uh, when a pull, pull request we get a pull request we are using GitHub and we are using their CI. So we only merge the code if it passes the current CI. So and it's not really a complex CI or anything like that, but uh, yeah, we we run the QMU and uh, we test that we yes, we get expected output from the sample modules, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's nothing very fancy, but uh, yeah. Uh, got it. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, um, let's adding switch. to that, uh, the uh, Rust for Linux project definitely runs that CI every time something flows through there, but it may still potentially be of value to run it on zero day for any changes that affect the Rust code that didn't happen to flow through the Rust for Linux tree, which will eventually happen once it's merged. Uh, yeah, yes, I understand. Uh, yeah. So that's the purpose, uh, like we're covering uh, uh, Linux next or something that Rust, Rust branch will be merged too. So, uh, and the next is that uh, uh, we also noticed that there is this line. It mentions about uh, uh, there may be a C version of samples as a comparison of uh, Rust samples. So, uh, not sure if it is necessary to run a performance test compared to uh, to to compare them. Furthermore, uh, when developers start to use Rust to write other kernel code or modules or drivers, uh, is, is performance tests needed for this case? Uh, just for example, uh, Andrew just delivered a great talk about NVMe driver, driver written in Rust, and he has shown a very impressive and convinced performance data uh, for this Rust driver. Uh, in, in zero day CI, we, we already have some general file system benchmarks, such as uh, FSMark, FileBench, uh, XFS test, etc. So uh, when, when some Rust drivers is introduced is into kernel, uh, is it possible to bring some performance change to this, to these general benchmarks? So if, if so, we can also provide some performance report to Rust developers as a reference. And the purpose is to make sure that the drivers written in Rust can have 
competitive performance compared to the drivers written in C, at least uh, there shouldn't be large regressions. And uh, we should also consider different, uh, for example, uh, for NVM dri NVMe driver, maybe uh, different uh, workflows uh, like uh, sequential random and different IO size and different uh, cases. And the next slide. Uh, here are some other ideas of uh, runtime testing in the next step. Uh, first, I'm not sure if there are any uh, difference to compile Rust code as uh, built-in or modules. And if they will be loaded during the boot process, it may be necessary to run boot testing to, to check for potential influence. And um, we are also considering using uh, fuzzing tools such as syscolor to to spot some potential issues uh, in some corner cases. And second, now we notice that uh, there are two new configs introduced, uh, which is uh, Rust kernel K unit test and uh, uh, Rust self test. So uh, K unit test and uh, Kernel self tests are general testing frameworks inside the kernel, and they are already enabled in our test service. So it's nice to see that Rust uh, has also enabled them. So we'll do more investigations and try to support uh, Rust K unit tests and Rust self tests in the future. And uh, the, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, the self yeah. test. It's just, uh, for the moment, it's just uh, a module we are using because we don't yet compile the hash tests uh, in Rust. Uh, for those of you that know Rust, is you, you just write unit tests, right, in hash tests and a function, etc. So we want to integrate that, like uh, like the code documentation tests, we want to integrate it with KUnit as well. Uh, so they are not using the K-self-test uh, uh, the framework. Oh, so yeah, yes. I yeah, it's, yeah. it's a temporary yeah. module that will go away uh, soon. Yeah. Yes, thanks. I understand that uh, this, this sample self test is just named, not uh, has no relation with the, the, the kernel self test. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. I uh, understand. Yeah, it was and... for clarification. And the third is, is an initial idea. Uh, I've just learned from, from previous talks about uh, enabling Rust GCC front end. So uh, we can looking forward that Rust could also work on GCC backend soon. And we, we used to have a tool of GCC, which is called uh, GCOV. And, and we found it is useful for some runtime tests it can help to, to analyze uh, code performance, such as uh, how often each line of code executes and which lines are executed and which lines are not, or how much computing time the code uses. So, so I'm wondering if it is possible to gather these data for Rust code if Rust GCC front end is available. The, the, the basic idea is that uh, a test case that covers more lines of code is more likely to detect issues. So we can use GCOV data to, to select suitable test cases. And uh, that's all for the talking. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh, any questions? So th thanks a lot for all the work you have done. It has helped us uh, quite a bit, and you have already found some issues and, and doing the, the, the builds that you are doing. So thanks a lot for all that effort very early. Uh, they started working on this very, very early. So thanks a lot. Uh, one question maybe, uh, how, how, how hard has been uh, integrating, uh, from your perspective, how hard has been integrating the, the Rust support into your CI? Just 
because maybe that uh, encourages, if it has been easy enough, maybe it encourages other CIs to, to follow your steps, basically. Yes. Um, uh, to be honest, um, actually, I, I don't know quite much about Rust code itself. The, the integration of uh, Rust into our test service is mostly about setting up the environment or setting up the, yeah. the tool chain. Yeah, yes, this is the, uh, the, the most important. And um, I think the one point is about the, the Rust ver compiler version switching. It means, um, uh, just as I, I mentioned in previous slide, that they may be updated frequently and regularly. And, and uh, maybe I'm not sure if this is common for other CIs or unique to, to our CI because we need to do by section and we, we will jump from one commit to another and the compiler version will switch from one to another too. So this may be a, a, some place that is uh, not uh, very uh, easy to handle. And um, about other uh, issues, uh, I think this is uh, something that uh, that that, that uh, cost me uh, effort to solve. So overall, it was not too hard, right? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I I I, I mean, uh, you have done a lot of work, and I appreciate it. But uh, I was trying to like uh, convince others or try to get other CIs to to follow your steps, and, and you see. And, and, integrate our support into their CIs. So um, yes, I think the, the maybe the, the hard parts are in the to-do list. There. So enabling yeah. uh, much runtime tests and this is something that we don't have too much experience. Maybe <laughs> another question I have uh, for the GCC and uh, integrating GCC into the CI as well. GCC builds maybe. When that is ready, uh, yeah, yeah, we should get something there as well. So, uh, could I ask a question? That uh, the the last thing I mentioned about GCOV, uh, uh, if uh, Rust GCC uh, front end is finally available, would GCOV uh, be supported to to check the coverage data for Rust code? Yeah, you just would see it just like a regular C and C plus plus front end, so it would just work exactly the same. Oh, uh, got it. Thanks. So it might be, yeah, um, there might be similar question, I guess, for Antoni, like about the uh, CodeGen project, um, you know, but accessing GCOV, I think we get it for free, pretty much. You know, as far as I can tell. I have no idea. Yeah. It seems to be like the GCOB project has like reinvigorated itself. I think there's been a new maintainer has been given recently, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know about GCOB, but I did very recently stabilize the support for uh, non GCOB based uh, profiling, uh, like instruction level precise coverage support. The instrument coverage options are now stable, which allow you to have the instrumentation based non sampling. Uh, coverage, which should give you precise data rather than sampled data, I believe. Okay, cool. I'll well, just stop going on there then. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, yeah, thanks, Miguel. We'll be, we would have liked to have you here, but uh, thanks to, for doing it virtually. I know it's hard, so thank you.